As soon as the selection of Senator Kamala Harris as the Democrat vice president candidate for the US presidential elections was announced, Indians around the world for a brief second turned ecstatic for a person of Indian roots had been nominated for such a prestigious position in the United States of America. However, soon the realization began to dawn upon Indians that having Kamala Harris in the White House is not exactly the right proposition for the Indian diaspora or India because despite her Indian origin, she has failed to stand up for Indians. A child of immigrants, Kamala Harris is the first woman of Indian and Jamaican descent who could become the Vice President of USA. Daughter of Dr. Shamala Gopalan Harris from Chennai, she has now become the first American of Indian and Asian descent to run on the Vice Presidential ticket in the US. Dr. Shamala, a cancer researcher in Berkeley, passed away in 2009. Kamala Harris's Jamaican-American father, Donald Harris, an economist taught at Stanford University. However, those putting Kamala at the pedestal owing to her Indianness should understand that she embraces not her Indian side but for the longest time has identified herself as merely black American, distancing herself from her Indian roots. Kamala has distanced herself from Indian symbolism and it was only after she started running for the presidential nomination last year that she started embracing it more openly, perhaps to woo Indian-American donors. The appointment of Kamala Harris might have been good optics for the press, especially for the likes of CNN who up until now had to carry the dead weight of Joe Biden all around. The idea behind Harris's nomination to the top flight league is to have some racial diversity in the competition and quietly win over Indian American and Black American votes. The Indians in particular are swayed by such emotions when someone with Indian roots is elevated to such top party positions and therefore Democrats are looking to toy with these emotions. But the reality is different and gauging Kamala Harris's political footprint over the last two years will be enough to tell you where her allegiances lie. Just to jog your memory a bit, Kamala Harris had last year evoked Kashmir and had told a line that did not go down well with Indians. We have to remind the Kashmiris that they are not alone in the world. We are keeping a track on the situation. Kamala Harris had said this in a statement last year when she was seeking the presidential nomination from the Democratic Party. Her statements show that she has fallen for Pakistani propaganda and might even have a soft side for India's arch nemesis. Not only did she interfere in India's internal matter, but also has never spoken about the genocide and forced exodus of Kashmiri pundits and Pakistan-funded terrorism in the Kashmir Valley. Kamala Harris's uncle Dr. G. Balachandran has already made it clear that her plans on Kashmir are sure to become a flashpoint in the relations between the two countries, which have been on an unprecedented upswing under President Donald Trump's tenure. Dr. Balachandran said, even if she is of Indian extraction as a vice president or even as a senator now, if she thinks anything in India impinges upon the civil rights of Indian citizens, she will speak out loud and clear. He also said that she was all for quote-unquote human rights and will speak on Article 370 removal in Jammu and Kashmir. Of late, it has become a trend in the international press, Democrats and liberals around the world to poke their nose in India's Kashmir matter while keeping mum on Pakistan and terrorism. Jeremy Corbyn of the United Kingdom had learned this the hard way and if Kamala Harris keeps ruffling the feathers in this direction, then it wouldn't be a hyperbole to say that the Indian American voters and affluent donors will ditch her despite the colour of her skin. Kashmir has always been India's own territory and making unsubstantiated claims of human rights violations will not go down well with any government in India. Her reservations against India and the Trump administration may have also shaped her decision to skip the wildly popular Howdy Modi event in Houston last September and it speaks volumes about Democrats and the plan they have in place for Indian Americans. With the Trump administration and the Modi government in India forging a very strong Indo-US alliance amid tensions with China, the alliance of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, if voted to power, will undo all the work.
Kamala Harris and a group of other Democratic senators were the ones who had introduced a resolution condemning the use of terms such as Chinese virus or Wuhan virus to describe the novel coronavirus, describing it as racist. Although the Democrats haven't done much to condemn the cover-up of the virus outbreak by China, which caused the pandemic in the first place. If Democrats really wanted to put forward a face to woo Indian Americans and Indian donors, then they could have gone with Tulsi Gabbard, who in many of her statements has put forward well-informed observations on India's affairs. Ironically, Tulsi's onslaught on Kamala's politics during the Democratic nominee debate caused Kamala Harris to drop out of the presidential race in the first place. Kamala Harris fails to embrace her Indian identity. This sort of step-brotherly treatment to her own identity will be difficult to explain once Indian Americans get out of the bubble. An estimated 1.3 million Indian Americans are expected to vote in this year's presidential election in the US. And their donations to Republican as well as Democratic parties are significant. The least they expect is to be understood and respected. While the selection of Harris might have given a momentary emotional edge to Biden's campaign, but in the long run, it is Donald Trump who will be reaping the rewards of Kamala Harris's accession.